Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we go back in depth and uh, for this one it's pretty special. It's the Sorcerer of the Red Cyclops, the Captain of the First Fellowship, the Commander of the Sekhmet, Chief Librarian, Master of Precognition, the Caster of the Rubric of Araman. It is Azek Araman. In my opinion, probably the best HQ choice of a Thousand Suns player and in this video we're going to find out exactly why. As usual then, we will start with Araman's data sheet. Now he is an HQ option with a power level of 7 and comes in at a stock points price of 131. For those that are playing match play games, he has a move of 6 inches, a weapon skill of 2+, plus, a ballistic skill of 2+, plus, a strength and toughness of 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, a leadership of 9 and a save of 3+. plus. Araman is a single model armed with the Black Staff of Araman, an Inferno Bolt Pistol, Frag and Crack Grenades, and you can only ever take one of this uh, model in your army. The Inferno Bolt Pistol has a range of 12, is a pistol 1 type, strength of 4, AP minus 2, and 1 damage. Very similar to its Inferno Bolt Gun version that you find on Rubric Marines. Frag and Crack Grenades are pretty standard amongst uh, Astartes models, whether they are Heretic or Imperium, which means that we have a Frag Grenade with a range of 6, which is a D6 number of shots, strength 3, AP 0, and damage 1, and a Crack Grenade, which is 1 shot, Range of 6, Strength 6, AP-1, and D3 damage. Now the Black Staff of Araman is basically a super buffed Force Stave. It gives you plus 2 strength in melee with an AP of minus 1, and instead of that D3 variable damage, we have a flat 3 damage. Araman can ride a Disc of Zinch, which gives you a plus 2 on your power rating, but if he does so, he loses the Infantry keyword, gains Demonic, Cavalry, and Fly keywords. Now we all know Fly in 8th edition is superb. His move characteristic is then increased to 12 inches, and his disc can also attack enemies with its blades when he fights. Now just with uh, Enlightened or Exalted Sorcerers on discs and so on, the blades give you an extra single attack at Strength 4, AP 0 and 1 damage that you do after you've made the, uh, the regular attacks from the model riding it. If you do put Araman on a disc, his points will increase to 166. Now both points values of 131 and 166 are accurate in the Codex, Chapter approved and any FAQs have not adjusted those points. Araman's abilities are Death to the False Emperor, which is pretty common amongst all Heretic Astartes, which means any sixes that you roll when you come to attack with this guy is going to get an extra attack uh, using that same weapon and that same profile. He is the Arch Sorcerer of Zinch, which means we can add one to any psychic tests or deny the witch test that you take with Araman. He has a Sigil of Corruption, which gives him a 4 plus invulnerable save. And he has the rule of Lord of the Thousand Suns, where we can reroll hit rolls of one made for friendly Thousand Suns units within 6 inches of him. This is where he gets even better. As a Psyker, he can attempt to manifest 3 Psychic Powers in each friendly phase, and attempt to deny 3 Psychic Powers in each enemy Psychic phase. He obviously knows Smite, because all Psykers know Smite, and 3 Powers from the Discipline of Change, and or the Dark Hereticus Discipline. His faction keywords are Chaos, Zinch, Heretic, Astartes, and Thousand Suns. And his regular keywords, Character, Infantry, Sorcerer, Psyker, and Araman. One thing to note with that attack's profile, though, is Hateful Assault. This came out in a recent FAQ, which kind of complements the Imperial Space Marines who have got Shock Assault, where in effect, if you make a charge move, or are charged, or you perform a heroic intervention, you gain one attack to the characteristics of this model. This, in most circumstances, then, in the first round of combat, is going to give Araman a flat five attacks, and then the potential for Death to the False Emperor giving those extra attacks on a 6+. So let's be honest, for 166 points on a disc, Araman is an utter, utter beast. Hitting on 2s, re-rolling 1s, 5 attacks on the most part, probably going to get an extra 1 out of that Death to the False Emperor if you are facing keyword Imperium units. A strength of 6, AP-1 and 3 a damage weapon with the Black Staff of Araman. And that 4 plus invulnerable save for that 166 points is amazing. Not to mention adding one to psychic tests, which don't degrade either. Unlike some of the other, you know, like Magnus or the Lord of Change or uh, uh, Kairos Fate Weaver from the Chaos Demons Codex, they degrade. 
With this guy, you have permanently got that plus one, which means you've got a better chance of getting off a more powerful smite when you need to roll more than 10 on the psychic test. So this leads to the question of why would you ever take an exalted sorcerer? Now I love exalted sorcerers, but you know what? An exalted sorcerer on a disc is 132 points, plus the cost of their four stave, which is actually eight points, takes the uh, exalted sorcerer on a disc to 140 points. Araman is 166 points, so for the difference of 140 plays 166, a difference of just 26 points, you are gaining a flat 3 damage melee weapon, you're gaining an additional offensive psychic power, 2 additional deny the witch powers, plus 1 to your invulnerable save giving you a 4 plus instead of a 5 plus, and the psychic bonus for the arch sorcerer giving you that plus 1 to psychic tests. Araman is an utter utter bargain. As usual with this series then, can we make him any better? That's the first question we need to look at. So are there any other units out there that can give this guy a buff? Now the first thing that springs to mind is the Mutilith Vortex Beast, one of the ultimate buffing units in the Thousand Suns Codex, and there's a couple in there that could actually be of use. The first one is Temporal Flux, allowing a Zinch unit from your army within 9 inches of the Vortex Beast to reroll failed charges, so that would impact uh, Araman, on his, especially on his disc. The second one is Ephemeral Touch, which allows a Zinch unit within 9 inches of the beast to improve the AP of their melee weapons uh, by a value of 1. That would mean the Black Staff of Araman would then go to an AP-2 weapon. The only other unit from the Codex that I can see that can really give them a little bit of an edge as well is as much as they dis dislike each other is Magnus the Red, the Primarch of the Thousand Suns, which allows you to re-roll hit rolls of 1, which doesn't really do anything for Araman because he has that as well, but any dice rolls of a 1 that are made as part of a psychic test for friendly Thousand Suns unit within 9 inches of Magnus the Red. So that really enhances any any whiff rolls that you make on the psychic test for Araman. Now we've already talked about his amazing 4 plus invulnerable save, but how's this when we start going into Warlord traits? As a named character, he has a fixed Warlord trait of Otherworldly Prescience, which improves your Warlord's invulnerable save by 1 to a maximum of 3 plus. So if Araman is your Warlord, he automatically comes with that, giving him a 3 plus invulnerable save for zero cost. Your 26 points over the top of a Exalted Sorcerer are looking even better. Let's now take a look at the stratagems. Now there are several here that are going to benefit Araman, so could well be an expensive command point burning unit here. The first one we can look at, you already think that 3 Psychic Powers is good, right? Well, what if we take the Great Sorcerer for 1 command point, use that stratagem at the end of your Psychic phase, Select a Psyker from your army and that can immediately manifest an additional power. Now he already has plus one to casting, but what if we give him Cabalistic Focus just for another single command point? As long as he's within two other friendly Thousand Sun Psykers within six inches of him, we can add two to the Psychic Test, giving him a plus three. Your chances of now getting off some of those high-end powers or even that uh, D6 Super Smite is now increased dramatically. You could, of course, burn three command points on Coruscating Beam. I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm not going to be, uh, not going to continue with that one. Another option is a Chaos Familiar for one command point. At the start of the Psychic phase, a Psyker from your army can replace a single Psychic power with the power of your choice from Dark Hereticus. Well, he's already got access to that. Discipline of Change, he's already got access to that. But Discipline of Zinch, which he doesn't normally have access to. So that's going to give him another six powers to choose from. If you are not going to run Araman on a disc and you are going to run him on foot, then you can use Veterans of the Long War on him for one command point. Probably not the best use of a stratagem on a single figure, but it does mean you can add one to all wound rolls made for that unit until the end of the phase. So even with a strength six bashing stick that he has, uh, causing that flat three damage, you end up with a better chance of wounding some of the higher toughness models out there. So those, in my opinion, are the stratagems to watch out for to start spending some of those valuable command points on. Araman has some real buffs when you start adding some of those in. Now we can't talk about Sorcerer's Arcana because as a named character, he already comes with an artifact already, so he cannot be given any additional uh, artifacts from this list. Next then, let's take a look at the psychic powers that are going to give him probably that added advantage, not that he already needs it. First up, the Dark Hereticus Discipline. There are plenty to choose from here. In fact, I would say every single one, other than maybe Gift of Chaos, is probably exceptionally valuable in here. So let's quickly run through those then. Infernal Gaze, a warp charge of 5, which is going to be super easy for this guy to get off. 
If manifested, select an enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Now bear in mind we are adding 6 for all Battleforged Thousand Suns army, so 24 inch that becomes. And visible. 3 dice. Uh, the target suffers a single mortal wound on every roll of a 4+. plus. That's nice and easy. Death Hex. A warp charge of 8. Again, with your plus 1 or potentially plus 2 if you're running certain stratagems. Fairly average one to get off. This will remove enemy uh, invulnerable saves within 12 inches, well plus 6, so within 18 inches of the Psyker. Prescience with a warp charge of 7. Again, you're getting this off on a 6 on a standard roll. If manifested, select a Heretic Astartes unit within 18, plus 6, 24. You can add one to all hit rolls made for that unit till the start of the next psychic phase. So that is melee and shooting. So that is a real buff to any local Heretic Astartes units to Araman. Diabolic Strength, another good option here. A warp charge of just 6 if manifested. Select a Heretic Astartes model within 12, plus 6. Uh, until the start of the next psychic phase, add 2 to that model's strength characteristic and 1 to his attacks characteristic. Now I love using this one, especially on Demon Princes to be honest. However... Put this on Araman. He suddenly becomes strength 8 with 6 attacks on the charge, causing a flat 3 damage. I think this is a very, very good rival to the uh, the standard Smash Captain from the Blood Angels. And then finally, Warp Time. I think most uh, Chaos players like a bit of Warp Time. Warp Charge of 6. Pick a Heretic Astartes unit within 3 inches of the Psyker, which is 9 for the Thousand Suns, remember. You can immediately move as if it's your movement phase. Very handy when you're on a 12-inch moving disc. Now, Araman has access to the Discipline of Change as well. We have several that we could potentially choose from here. The two obvious favourites for me are Glamour of Zinch, a Warp Charge of 7. If manifested, select a friendly Thousand Suns unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. I'm now adding those 6s in automatically for you. Till the start of the next Psychic phase, your opponent must subtract 1 from hit rolls. This, just using it on himself, makes him even harder to hit, whilst he's dishing out the pain with his Black Staff. Weaver of Fates is a Warp Charge of 6. And if manifested, pick a thousand suns unit within 24 inches of him. Till the start of the next psychic phase, the invulnerable save is improved by one. Now you can't use this on himself uh, because he's already got that three plus invulnerable save, but a very very good buffing unit to nearby uh, nearby thousand suns units. My third choice out of here is temporal manipulation, and that allows you to uh, on a warp charge of six, select a friendly thousand suns unit within 12, and then immediately heal D3 wounds. If Araman is getting a little bit battered, then you have a chance to regen his wounds. The other powers in Discipline of Change with Zinch's Firestorm, where you get to roll 9 dice and every roll of a 6 is a mortal wound. And Doombolt, which is a warp charge of 9. Uh, and if manifested, an enemy unit within 24 inches and visible will suffer D3 mortal wounds. And in their following movement phase, must half their move characteristic and cannot advance. They are pretty good. Now, they are a high warp charge. Well, warp charge of 9 and, and uh, 7 for Zinch's Firestorm. A little bit too unreliable for my liking, as well as Boon of Mutation. Again, a little bit unreliable for me to see where that can go. I do like to have a little bit of continuity, a little bit of reliability when it comes to picking my powers, which is why Glamour and Weaver and Temporal are actually very, very good options. However, with a warp charge of 9, this is easily achievable at Araman, so Doombolt is actually probably not a bad option, especially if you remember you've got three powers to pick from here uh, with an option of an extra a power if you so desire, using that extra stratagem. Uh, using that extra stratagem doesn't give you access to Discipline of Zinch. I'm not the biggest fan of the Discipline of Zinch powers, let's be honest. Um, this is what you normally get for Zinch demons. So there are probably maybe one at a stretch, two options out of Discipline of Zinch you may want to go with. The first one, probably my favourite one out of the lot, is Gaze of Fate. A warp charge of six, if manifested, you get a free reroll dice for later in your turn. This basically prevents you, you know, on a very easy roll of basically 5 plus for Araman, is to not spend a command point on the uh, the standard re-roll that you get. That in effect gives you two potential re-rolls in a single phase, when normally most armies would only ever get that one stratagem at a re-roll. I'm not a big fan of Bold of Change, it's a warp charge of 9. If you kill a character, you can turn him into a spawn, but remember, all spawn models in match play, you've already got to pay the points for, which are about 30 odd points. So... For something that you may not ever get the chance to use, you've got to burn points in your army that you may never even see the tabletop. Boon of Change is probably variable that you might want to use, but again, this is just for for friendly Zinch Demon units, which he's not really going to benefit from. So for me, if you're going to take anything out of here when you're allying it to a Thousand Suns Force, Gaze of Fate is probably the one I'd go with. So as usual in this series, I do like to try and discuss how 
the best way to try and kill him is from an enemy perspective. Being one of the better HQs, if not the best HQ option from the Thousand Suns Codec, it's the same as trying to describe how you would kill a Space Marine uh, Chapter Master or any of your other super characters from any other Codex. They've got good invulnerable saves, they've got a good number of attacks in combat, so ideally you want to get the charge off first if you're ever going to face him in melee. If you've got an ability to remove the invulnerable save, that is going to be very, very useful. I know Imperial Psychers have that, and there's a few other factions that can potentially do that as well. But his probably his biggest weakness at this stage is just being Toughness 4. So a lot of weapons out there can force a lot of saves against him. If, remember, being a character, he becomes the nearest unit. So you've got to kill a bubble wrap that goes around him that will protect him, and then pour that firepower in before you can start taking any of his wounds. One thing that all characters can potentially suffer with is, of course, being sniped. So there are a bunch of sniper-type weapons out there in the enemy faction collection, and that will enable them to target characters. That also gives you the option of something like the Vindicare Assassin, maybe, but obviously it's all going to depend on what faction that you're going to be playing against your Thousand Sons to try and snipe a character. So, a very difficult character to kill, not impossible, depending on how uh, offensive the uh, Thousand Suns player is going to be, how aggressive their playstyle is going to be. Araman has that ability to be both super aggressive and just a super buffing unit, casting powers left, right and centre, and then picking his moment to pounce and then casting diabolic strength on himself, and then charging in and chopping stuff up. But the reality is, it's going to be weight of fire, weight of numbers, and uh, anything over strength 4 is going to be able to wound him that little bit easier, but you do have to get through any of his surrounding minions first. So there we go then guys, that is Azek Araman in depth. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of this guy. He's a total beast, he's a total badass, perfectly good as a defensive buffing machine and equally as an offensive uh, lunatic, shall we say, when it comes to close combat. As usual, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of Araman? If you are a Thousand Suns player, do you think he is a beast? Uh, and if you face Araman, what do you think of the ways of killing him? Is he a bit of a, a bit of a hard ass to try and kill? But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall catch you guys on the next video.